John, come over and join me on the sofa. Could have filed your John Mara, didn't you? John, how are you? Okay, thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, you've had such a, a long and varied life doing lots of different things, not so long. But let's talk about your photography first. We'll, we'll have a look at some of your work, but you're based now in the Isle of Harris, mm -hmm. and your, your photography work is based, well, around Lewis and Harris, the Outer Hebrides, in sort of fairly desolate, derelict landscapes, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I suppose you might say that. That that side of it does a, appeal to me more so than the um, you know the the traditional thing of going to the lovely beaches and photographing the sunsets and so on. That side of things doesn't really interest me. I'm more interested in the things that um, show a, something about what the people of the island have been up to. Mm. Because it, so many so many of the photos are either exteriors or interiors of of ruined houses, wallpaper peeling back, the, the, the furniture decaying. Why that aspect of it? Why the, the, the empty aspect of it almost? I think it's um, that when I first started going inside some of the houses, it was the fact that um, there were still so many um, uh, personal belongings and things that had been left behind. See, being from uh, you know, Manchester, the, the prospect of going, or probably anywhere on the mainland, mm. you know, the prospect of finding a house that had been empty for decades and going in and finding that it hadn't been vandalised or things been stolen um, was, w w well, that's, that's one thing in itself. But then the, um, I, th I, th I also think there's something, uh, probably a little bit of a nostalgic thing, because sometimes when I go in the houses, I'm seeing things that um, I can remember from the, when I was a kid, that m they might be the same taps on the kitchen sink that my parents had, or, you know, there's a bicycle lamp on the floor, and it's exactly the same bicycle lamp that I had on my first bike, and you know, things like that. When you came to the, the Outer Hebrides first, that wouldn't have been what grabbed you. It wouldn't have been empty, desolate houses no. or de derelict houses that attracted no. you to the area. No. Uh, well, we'd be, uh, myself and my wife, Helen, we'd been uh, first started coming up to the Hebrides in probably early to mid-90s. And, um, you know, once we'd visited the first time, it's like next time it was t to figure out where to go on holiday. It was came, kept, we kept coming back. And then ultimately that sowed a seed and just sort of thinking, could I run my business from here and what would it be like to live here? And ultimately the only way to find that out is to do it. The first place we visited, we came in on the ferry f to Lock Boysdale. And uh, as the island was appearing in the distance, um, it was there was like these little white specks on the hill uh, in, in the distance and it almost looked like sheep on a hill but it, as we got closer it, they were houses and what mm. struck me is that uh, what I really liked was the fact that wow you know people do actually live in that landscape it is possible you can do it and I thought well what, that's what I want to do. It, it's a very different piece of life and, and lifestyle from what most people will imagine as being your life and in the buzzcocks and the punk scene and living the, uh, the crazy rock and roll lifestyle. Yeah, I suppose so, but the, the, the Buzzcocks, well, first time around, the band split in 81. There were, I did uh, participate in a month-long reunion in 89, um, after which the band decided to carry on. Mm. Um, I decided that, you know, I did the month-long thing, I'd signed up for that, and then that was it. Bye-bye, I left it behind. Because I was into other things by then, you know, I was into, well, I got into racing. Um, Building engines. That, that turned into a business, effectively, you know, with people coming, want, wanting me to uh, build them engines. Uh, so that, that's basically still the day job, really. Uh, and the photography has uh, something that's come along in the last four or five years that has uh, uh, taken up more and more of my time. With the photography, where now are you, are you going to, is it still... The, the empty landscapes, the, the derelict that's appealing to you, or are you moving forward without changing anything? I think that uh, will probably evolve over time. I mean, I, I first, um, what first really got me into it was um, the long exposure night photography. Mm. But the, the opportunities to do that are very um, few and far between because you need to do it um, a couple of nights either yeah. side of a, a full moon. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because of you know our northerly latitude, the summer months are out because it just doesn't get dark enough yeah. to, to achieve that look that I like from my night photography. I added it up a while ago. I think last year there were probably six nights in the year that I was able to get out. <laughs> and Makes it a slow process. It very, yeah, and it can get very frustrating. But 
when I was doing the um, on some of the night photography adventures, because I would uh, sometimes often light up the interior mm -hmm. of a yeah. building, going in some of the houses, that's when I first saw that there were some really interesting things left mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And so I would then go back the following day during daylight hours and started photographing them. And I thought, well, this, in a way, it was a way of extending my um, time behind the camera because it, give or take, it didn't, wasn't really weather dependent, yeah. season dependent. So there were more opportunities. So uh, then that became a bit of an obsession, going searching out these houses. Who knows where it may take you next, John. Thank mm. you very much. Sit where you are, since you're nice and comfortable on the sofa. Sit there for a moment, and uh, I'm going to go back and find out how the teams did. John Marth, Apple.